here in Colorado. If you haven't signed up for that yet, check out the information. It's out there on social media. Um, check out the Facebook page uh, and get yourself put in the league. It's going to be some fun. We'll we'll talk about it uh, week to week. We'll do the drive. La- excuse me, the drive draft live. Man, I'm those two words. I'm combining them. We'll do the draft live that night. Uh, so it'll be fun stuff. Go check it out. Check out thedarkhand.com and get yourself some help. All right, the NFC North, right? Black and blue division. Best division there is. Used to be the NFC Central. Oh, that's where it's at. That's the good stuff, right, fellas? That's where it's at. I, I, NFC West, I know you're strong right now. NFC North, I know you got your thing going on. We're going to talk about you guys. Don't worry, we'll get to it. But tonight we're going to start off with the NFC North. That's my favorite division. That's where my team resides in the Lions. And you know what? I'm going to talk about these teams. What I'm going to do as I talk about these teams, I'm going to talk about them in the order that I think they're going to finish this season. Now, as a fan, obviously, I'd love to just go ahead and say the Lions are going to win the division. We're going to, you know, get the first round by, make it to the divisional game, and then it'll be tight to see who goes to the Super Bowl. But we'll make it, and we'll go ahead and go to the Super Bowl this year. That's my fan in me, right? That's not how I'm going to do this segment. I'm going to be real about it. I told you guys I'd be real about it, and I'm not going to play favorites. So, here we go. Starting off, this is the team I think is coming in in the basement of the best division in football, and that's the Chicago Bears. Now, locally, you guys got to see them play uh, the Broncos last week in the first week of the preseason. I watched that game. I rewatched that game. I tried to look for something positive about what the Bears got going on so far this part of the offseason. Honestly, I couldn't find anything. Now, they got some players on this team now. I mean, Sam Macho, he's a consummate pro. Um, He's he's not a pro bowler, but he's one of those role players that you need on your team. He can do a little bit of this. He can do a little bit of that. And he's solid. And, you know, as much as everybody likes to bag on Jay Cutler, he's physically, physically talented at the game of football. I think the problem is mental with him. And who knows? One day the light might come on, and they'll have a heck of a quarterback at that point. Kyle Fuller, I want to see how he plays. He's had a good start to his career playing defensive back there in Chicago. We'll see how he turns out. Um Lamar Houston, he led him in sacks last year. Let's see if he can have another good season for him. Brian Hoyer is going to push Jay Cutler. If Jay Cutler doesn't start off strong, if the Bears don't start off strong, I can see a situation where the fans start calling for Brian Hoyer. He's that guy who comes in and pushes your starter and might take his reps at some point. Alshon Jeffrey, he's back. Let's see what he can do with Kevin White on the other side. That could be a good tandem. Kevin White did not get into the game plan much at all. How's Jeremy Langford going to take over for... Oh, man, now his, his name's is escaping me. For the long time, Bears running back. Fill in the blank for me. Matt Forte, thank you. And um, how's he going to do? He looked solid till he got injured last season. So we'll see how that turns out behind the Bears' offensive line, which did not look good. They looked confused the other night against the Broncos. How's Kyle Long going to do, moving back inside to guard? Is Zach Miller, can he reproduce what he did at the end of last season when he joined the Bears late in the season and took over and led him in touchdown receptions with five after joining him late in the season? Can Tracy Porter live up to the current hype he's getting as another as a, a good corner in the NFL? He fell off the map for a while. Had a pretty solid year for the Bears last year. You know, so they have people. Can Eddie Royal stay healthy? Bringing over Broncos Danny Trevathan and Mitch Unrein, how are they going to help? I personally think Trevathan has peaked, and with the knee issues, his play is just going to slowly decline at this point. I really like him as a middle linebacker, don't get me wrong. I just think his time, you know, has come. And Willie Young, I believe he's in a contract year this year, former Detroit Lion. How's he going to play in his contract year? Numbers weren't strong for the Bears last year, as they weren't for, you know, a lot of teams. (coughs) Their opponents did... 
Third down conversions for them and their opponents were about even. Offensive yards were about even with them and their opponents. Total rushing yards. They got outrushed by their opponents. Passing yards are almost even. Sacks are almost even. They scored. They just they couldn't score. They gave up 47 touchdowns and only scored 34. And we're not seeing anything on offense this year that's so far. I mean, it's preseason. I get that. But we're not seeing anything so far that is promising that shows it's going to be any different. Their leading rusher's gone. Matt Forte's out the door to New Jersey. Alshon Jeffrey's back leading receiver. Jay Cutler was the leading passer. So, I mean, they, they can say they have some consistency going. Um, hopefully that consistency, second year in John Fox's system, even though it's going to be a new offense now that Adam Gase is gone, we'll see what the Bears can do. I think I got the Bears looking four and twelve, six and ten, somewhere in there. Um, with this division, though, you never know. We're going to beat us, each other up in this division, so you could see a, a potential four and twelve team go eight and eight with a couple of you know lucky plays here and there. Coming in third place, but easily could be second or first place with, a, again, a couple plays here and there in the division or even outside of the division with a couple plays here and there. I have the Lions coming in third in this division. Now, we got a lot of promise. There's a lot of what if with the Lions, in my opinion. There's a lot of unfilled po potential at this point. We have some rookies that look like they could be potentially pushing starters. Um... We have some depth being built. Nevin Lawson is being a very physical, you know, we're going to take the plays where he gets the penalty type of corner. Quandre Diggs is doing his thing. I told you guys, well, actually, I guess I didn't have a show at this point, but last year at this time, I was talking heavily about I thought he had the potential to be defensive rookie of the year depending on how he was used. And he had a very good year, but it wasn't quite that good of a year. Darius Slay's back. Alex Carter, he's going to be off the team. Sorry, I think he's done. We have some safety battles going on. Is Isaiah Johnson going to come and stay on the roster somehow? Maybe as a, a, a third or fourth safety and a special teams guy. Can Killebrew make the team, the rookie? I would like to see him. He's got the size. He's got the, the mentality I like to see. But can he make the plays? Can he learn the defense? Izzy, what's he going to do this year? Is he going to fix those mistakes last year that cost him about five sacks because he overcommitted and ran right past the quarterback or the quarterback ducked underneath him? Is he going to hit that 20-sack mark? I'd love to see him get the team record this year or tie Robert Porsche. That would be great. Rookie, Ashawn Robinson, how's he going to do? So far in preseason, he looks solid, solid against the run, got a nice pass rush. Anthony Zito made a play. Zeto. Zach Zener, his story is great. I think he makes this team. I think George Wynn is off the team. I think Randall Ridley doesn't make the team. Or Stephen Ridley. Antoine Williams, has been the rookie, has been thrust into a position he didn't know he was going to be in because we're all our linebackers are getting hurt. We're going to see how this offensive line comes together. I'd like to see them playing better than they are. Taylor Decker looks like he's definitely going to get the start at left tackle, so we're going to have to see how that goes. Um, it was a little shake. He's he's here and there. If he can get solid, it'll be good. Can Jake Ruduck push Dan Orlovsky for that backup spot? Jake Ruduck looks good. He looked real good. So, I mean, there's players. Can Eric Ebron fulfill his potential? Is, how's Marvin Jones and Golden Tate going to work out? Are we going to end up keeping Andrew Corliss, who everybody's up and roars about because of him firing the gun? Anquan Bolden. I love that pickup. That's great for us. So, I mean, we have some things. If it comes together, I can see it working out to where maybe we're not the third team. Maybe Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, who are going to be good as long as Aaron Rodgers is a Packer, and maybe this young team in Minnesota who's going to be fighting for that top spot also 
with their young defense that flew around and did so much for them last year. And now they're building up a young, talented offense with a very talented running back still in Adrian Peterson, who we'll talk about here in a minute. We've got to fix some things this year, though, if we're going to get better. We have to do better on third down conversions this year. I mean, we did pretty good at stopping other teams, but we need to be better than 75 out of 203 conversions. We got outgained, but not by much. We got outrushed by a lot. We had the worst rushing game in the league last year. It was pitiful. We need to do better there. And I think we have some of the players that might do that. It's going to have to be a mixed bag of tricks for sure. I like the rookie's grit of just hitting the spot that he saw and taking it 96 yards to the house. I think he also beats George Wynn out. That's another reason I think George wins off the team. Because Washington can play his spot on special teams. We got Theo Riddick. We got Golden Tate. Marvin Jones is going to do his thing. Ziggy's going to lead us in sacks again. He'll probably lead us in fumbles again. Our leading tackler, we sent back in Stephen Tillett. Our second leading tackler, Josh Bynes, he's having his injury issues. I think our defense is going to be somewhere between middle of the pack and maybe top ten. We're going to have to do better in the return game on both punt returns and kick returns. And we can't have Amir Abdullah back there or Golden Tate being that option. Somebody needs to step up. All right, third, second. We're up to second. Second in this division could easily be first. I have the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. Now, a lot of people are, why would you put the Packers second? You said they got Aaron Rodgers, they're always going to win. And that's true. I do think that. I really do. Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the NFL and the only quarterback that if I woke up tomorrow and it said, breaking news, big trade, Lions trade Stafford for Aaron Rodgers. Now, that'll never happen, but that's the only scenario I'd be like, well, okay, and be cool with that. So the Packers are going to be good because of them, because of him. They don't have that much on defense. If the Al Jazeera reports are true and the NFL suspends Julius Peppers, who led the team in sacks, and Clay Matthews, who they were going to move back to his more natural position of outside linebacker, where he would have picked up you know, another 10 sack season easy, if those two guys end up being suspended, that's going to hurt the Packers' defense quite a bit because that's pretty much their defense. They have some you know, okay, decent here and there secondary guys. Ha ha, Clinton Dix is flashy. Um, he led the team in tackles, though, last year. They got receivers that show up and then disappear, like Devontae Adams and Randall Cobb. They have some, I mean, they have some guys, again, it, it, in this division, these teams, it's a few plays here and there. If a couple guys show up, I mean, Jeff Janis, is he going to have another step up in his ability in his game? Is he going to take the next step? at receiver is Ty Montgomery finally going to take that next step at receiver is Jordy Nelson's other knee going to give out because now he's got soreness in the opposite knee so I got the Packers because of their what ifs and really their lack of defense I mean Sam Shields is going to be back Nick Perry can he fulfill what he came out as I thought he would be much better and he's pretty solid against the run but he's not getting much pass rush is Eddie Lacy in this new body going to be able to do the same things that they think Eddie Lacy can do? So we'll see. This is a team that had good numbers last year. They had, you know, a plus five turnover ratio. 42 touchdowns to 36. They did not have the sack numbers that they've had in previous years because they moved Clay Matthews inside last year. But outside of that, again, this is a team that right down the line, you look at the stats, their stats versus the opponents, it's pretty even. They have their top guys in every category back. So I got the Packers going third in this division and making the playoffs. I got two teams in this division making the playoffs. I think the Lions go somewhere around 8-8. Eight and eight. 
We might get to nine and seven, ten and six. A few things here and there. 